But I would love to hurt him and finish him and put him out. How was he punching? Was it hurting like you? Like a son of he punches like a meal kick. Unbelievable. Excuse my French, please. Oh, my God. It's time! You're listening to the Cage Nation TV Prize Fight Podcast. Coming to you from the Coastal Cameron Studios in Wellington, North Carolina. Are you ready? Here's your host, the big fella, Albert Cameron. Let's get it on! Thank you for joining us for the Prize Fight Podcast. I'm your host, the big fella, Mr. Albert Miller. And what are my three favorite words in the English Dictionary, friends? It's Fight Week. Next Level Fight Club number 8, coming down this weekend, September 16th, at the Kerr Scott Building at the North Carolina State Fairgrounds in Raleigh, North Carolina. Tickets are available right now at nextlevelfightclub.com. Again, nextlevelfightclub.com. Tickets are going fast. Good seats still available, but you want to act right now. If you buy your tickets online, there's a good chance that they may be available at Will Call if they can't get them to you in time, but the online ordering system for Next Level Fight Club is incredibly easy, smooth, Go there. Go to the website right now, nextlevelfightclub.com. Get your tickets. This week on the Prize Fight Podcast, we're going to be talking about three of the fights on the fight card that have really caught my notice. Coach Chase Gamble is going to be taking on Alan Stewart. Hannah Shockwave Cypher is going to be taking on Nicole Smith. Alan Bowes is making his pro debut against Eric Ellerby. As always, friends, card is subject to change this week on the Prize Fight Podcast. We're going to be breaking down those fights, why I took notice, and we're going to have a lot of fun this week on the Prize Fight Podcast. Before we go into break, uh, we definitely want to send a lot of thoughts, prayers, love, good energy out to Florida. Hurricane Irma is just making a mess down there. The Carolinas are fine, but, you know, our heart is definitely going out to those folks. Um, So if you have the opportunity to help out with the rescue and relief efforts, we are very much encouraging you to do so. When we come back, we're taking a look at Coach Chase Gamble versus Alan Stewart, a light heavyweight bout in Next Level Fight Club 8. It's all right here on the Prize Fight Podcast. Weight cut management is one of the biggest hurdles that a combat athlete will endure as they prepare for competition. Our friend Sheena Lee believes wholeheartedly that Plexus is just the supplement that could give you the boost that you need for body weight management. Plexus is all natural, GMO free, and gluten free. One pink drink a day and you are off and running. Find out what Plexus can do for you by visiting facebook.com slash slimdownfuelup or by sending Sheena an email at slimdownfuelup at gmail.com. Again, that is facebook.com slash slimdownfuelup or slimdownfuelup at gmail.com. Get a hold of Sheena today and let's find out what science can do for your next weight cut. Hey everyone, while we're taking a break, we just want to remind you that right now we are looking for new people to join the Cage Nation TV roster of creators. We're looking for creators who have a fight circuit close to home, who have a sincere passion for combat sports, and would like to help us bring new territories to the forefront of our coverage. For more information, visit www.cagenationtv.com slash opportunity slash pioneer or send us an email at cagenationtv at gmail.com. Welcome back to the Prize Fight Podcast. We're talking Next Level Fight Club 8, going down at the Kerr Scott Building in Raleigh, North Carolina, the North Carolina State Fairgrounds. Tickets available right now. You have an opportunity right now at this moment to take a look at the premier regional fight card in North Carolina. I firmly believe that. Next Level Fight Club is not just a clever name. They really are doing some really next level stuff. What more uh, evidence do you need than their heavyweight champion, Alan Crowder, getting signed to the Ultimate Fighting Championship? Crowder went from fighting Next Level Fight Club, fighting the Bellator, now he's in the UFC. So clearly Next Level Fight Club is putting on some great cards, and you can get tickets right now at nextlevelfightclub.com. First fight I want to talk about is Chase Gamble, the coach, versus Alan Stewart. Now this is going to be a light heavyweight bout. Uh, Chase Gamble's third consecutive Next Level Fight Club bout. He fights other places, but Next Level Fight Club is where he's had a lot of his bouts. Gamble is coming off of a decision win over knockout specialist Harold Hubbard. Regionally, Gamble has himself a reputation, and I've seen it personally. He is tough as nails, and he'll fight anyone. We always talk about on the Prize Fight Podcast about how his bout with Alan Crowder was like, oh man, Crowder took a fight on 12 hours notice against a guy he... Didn't know he was going to fight. Well, the same thing is, that was the same thing on Gamble's side, too. Chase Gamble fought a much heavier opponent on very, very short minute notice. And, um, you know, he, he goes in and he engages. He fights. And he really was taking the fight to Crowder for a good bit of that fight, relying on his wrestling ability. 
We cannot rest on our laurels about this one fight, though. That would be incredibly unfair to do to Chase Gamble to say, okay, well, this one fight will define you. It won't. Chase Gamble has a lot of other fights outside of that fight with Crowder, and he's got a lot more fights in him that are going, we're going to be talking about. I firmly believe that the fight with Alan Stewart is so closely matched, so evenly put together, that this is going to be one of those fights we're going to be talking about Chase Gamble of, of, of ability, of what he's able to do. He has... Gamble, I'm talking about, has the reputation of being tough as nails, and consistently he goes in and he fights for the finish. A lot of the time, we'll have wrestlers go in and we use the same terminology, we'll use the same word, and that's lay and pray. Gamble's not a lay and pray fighter. He really isn't. He goes in there and he fights for finishes. Now, Alan Stewart, a submission artist, he's coming off of a loss to a nationally ranked Jay Gray. Legacy Fighting Alliance veteran, Jay Gray. Stewart has an incredible regional experience. He's been sharpening himself against the same caliber of iron that Gamble has. Randy Couture said it on the first season of The Ultimate Fighter. Iron sharpens iron. The people you choose to train with, the people you choose to compete against, change you fundamentally. Make you either a better fighter or a worse fighter. Gamble and uh, Stewart have been sharpening themselves against the same caliber of iron. Uh, Stewart's wins are coming by way of submission or decision. He clearly, evidence is there. The proof is in the pudding that he has a very thorough, very adept ground game. Chase Gamble, very adept at changing his strategy mid-fight and exploring multiple opportunities for victory in the middle of the fight. So what we have is we have someone who's very, very good at wrestling against someone who is extremely good at submissions. So, you know, the tail of the tape is there. We're going to see an exciting ground war. When guys are training to, to fight, they're going to work on two things. One, they're going to work on becoming better at what they're really good at. Two, they're going to work on what they're not so great at. Their, opp- their greatest opportunity for improvement. Uh, the fight is going to come down to Gamble's ability to endure and ground and pound. He's going to grind. Versus Alan Stewart's ability to seek and implement submissions and decisions. It's going to be an incredible ground fight. And any Brazilian jiu-jitsu student will tell you, wrestling and jiu-jitsu complement each other. And we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot of the great things of Chase Gamble and a lot of the great things about uh, Alan Stewart coming out that we haven't seen before. Because I don't think they fought the caliber of fight that they fought against each other. Whenever Gamble fought fought Crowder, Crowder was going to stand and strike with him. I don't know if Chase Gamble has ever fought anyone who's going to be willing to push his ground game, willing to be on the ground as much as he is. And Alan Stewart, I don't know if he's ready for the oncoming storm that is Coach Chase Gamble. Gamble... The first time I saw the guy, and, and I don't know why this sticks out so much, but the first time I saw Gamble fight, it was a Crowder fight. Again, it's unfair to define him, but I mean, that was my first impression. First impressions mean a lot, especially when it was a good impression. He's fighting Crowder. Crowder, much heavier. And I was so thoroughly impressed by the way Chase Gamble's muscle memory, his instinct of wrestling just took over. And when he fought his last fight, I mean, his wrestling was so just... Attack style. I want to say attack style wrestling. I'm not comparing him to Kerry Collot, but I feel like there's a lot of attack style wrestling there, and I think that's what separates Gamble from being a lay and pray fighter, is that he does have that attack style. And Alan Stewart, I mean, his submissions are so slick. I mean, you fight a guy with a submission reputation, you know the submissions are coming, so that makes securing the submission a lot more difficult in theory. If you fight Ronda Rousey, you know you should start training for the, to defend the armbar. Does that stop it from coming? No. You know, it just makes it, you know, Ronda Rousey has to come up with more inventive ways to apply the armbar. So with Chase Gamble's wrestling, Alan Stewart's submission skills, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of the best of each other coming out. And the best way to find out, ladies and gentlemen, don't take it from me. What do I know? I'm just a guy with a microphone. Enjoys what he does a lot. The best way to find out is actually to be attendance in Raleigh, North Carolina at the Kerr Scott Building and the North Carolina State Fairgrounds. Um, let's talk about the keys to victory. The keys to victory, let's start with Gamble here. Cage positioning and awareness are going to be crucial. He doesn't want to give Stewart any unnecessary advantage by getting into a bad position for submission. Rob Lynn told me first, and I know he's not the one who came up with it, but he told me first that without position, there is no submission. Gamble wants to make sure that while he's employing that attack style wrestling, while he's going out there looking for the finish, that he's not giving away any position to to Alan Stewart. And examples of giving away a bad position, uh, getting yourself up against the cage if there's a guillotine opportunity. 
getting away from your corner where Stewart's corner could advise him on submissions to possibly attack with. The position that Chase Gamble wants to be in is one where he's one, one, either able to score with a submission or two, able to score with strikes while Stewart's in a very bad position. He wants to make sure he uh, knows where he's at, closer to his corner, that he's not giving any advantage to Stewart that is unnecessary. Two, he wants to be confident in, confident, confident in his wrestling skill and utilizing smash mouth wrestling to score points. Well, what does that mean? Smash Mouth Wrestling, I'm saying, is that attack style, going for the kill. Uh, you know, I wrestled one year, and it was a good year. It taught me a lot. But, you know, there's a difference between employing a cross face that's contact on contact to move someone's head direction another way. And then there's another, there's a big difference, throwing that cross face from downtown. And I'm sure the wrestler, the wrestlers listening will be able to tell you there's a big difference. Perhaps throwing a little bit more cross faces from downtown would be considered Smash Mouth. Uh, you know, grinding different parts of the anatomy, shin bones, elbows, forearms, against the softer parts of the of the human anatomy, like the chin, the jaw. Just getting in there and being nasty about the wrestling, staying within the rules, competing within the rules, being a good sportsman, but just getting in there and attacking. If we come back down to the to the analogy of wrestling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, really complement each other. They are both have equal opportunities of being greater than each other. Chase Gamble has some excellent wrestling. He wants to get in there, and he just wants to grind it out. Alan Stewart's only been in the third round once. That is an interesting statistic for me. Alan Stewart has only been in the third round once. He has an incredible record. He clearly is very adept at stoppages, but he's only been in the third round once. Chase Gamble has been in the third round a lot of times. In fact, one of Chase Gamble's strengths are he's able to grind out a fight He's able to take it to the third round. He's able to score those crucial points when the other guy's tired. That he needs to not to be afraid to pace himself. To score enough to take the fight into the third round because Alan Stewart hasn't been there before. So logic says, if you're used to winning fights in the third round and your opponent hasn't been in the third round, where do you want to take him? Take him to the third round. It's uncharted territory for Allen. And that also has the opportunity to backfire on Chase Gamble a lot. What if he takes Allen Stewart to the third round? And Allen Stewart's just fantastic in the third round. He looks fresh. He's popping up. But statistically, and numbers do not lie. Statistically, Chase Gamble, that is his bread and butter. That's where he's going to score those points. And that's where I see he's really going to win. The keys to victory for Stewart. Always be looking for dominant position and finishes. The fight is better for Stewart the shorter it is. Statistically, again, those numbers do not lie. Statistically, if Alan Stewart is able to take the fight and score early and score the stoppage, get the submission, if he's able to do that, the shorter the fight is, statistically, the better for Stewart it will be. And not just Stewart, but I guess anybody when you when you come down to think about it. But in this particular fight, in the context of this particular competition, if Stewart is able to fight to score positions and finishes early, it's going to be better for him than it's going to be for Gamble. Uh, Alan Stewart needs to not be afraid to stand and engage on the feet with Chase Gamble. With Alan Stewart's submissions and stopping power, being on the feet increases his chances of capitalizing on victory. Let's say... Alan Stewart is in the middle of the fight with Chase Gamble, and he notices a hitch somewhere in his striking. He's able to time Alan uh, Chase Gamble. He's able to, I don't know, keep distance, keep the jab, use a combination that Gamble is not ready for. Winning by submission and then having an uh, attack on the standing, I mean, that's just creating a greater margin of dominance in the middle of the fight. If he stands on his feet with Gamble... Not saying completely abandon the submission. Always be aware of that. But if uh, Gamble is just doing something where Alan Stewart is able to secure, score more points and engage more on the feet, he should be ready to do that. The third key to victory for Alan Stewart is conditioning is going to be crucial. Alan Stewart needs to be mindful of pace and go into the third round without sacrificing opportunities to engage and score. I think, and this is no secret to anyone. I mean, this is no... Albert Miller being in Chase Gamble's corner or, you know, sneaking in the locker room and knowing the game plan. I mean, the the proof is in the pudding. 
Chase Gamble's uh, record will tell you this. Chase Gamble is good at winning the fight in the third. He's very good at enduring, grinding, outlasting, getting decision victories. So Alan Stewart needs to be mindful of his pacing. We won't, we know that Alan Stewart, the fight's going to be better if he stops it early. But he also needs to be ready that Chase Gamble might very well take him to the third. And he needs to watch his conditioning. He needs to watch his pacing. He doesn't need to blow his entire gas tank on the first two rounds. He needs to be looking for opportunities. If Chase Gamble gives up an arm, arm bar the crap out of it. If he gives up his neck, you choke him. But, you know, watching your gas tank, pacing yourself, getting ready for the third round. On the Prize Fight Podcast, I don't pick winners. I think that's completely unfair. I say that regionally, these guys are so, they're coming from so far away. They're doing so much that it would be impossible for me to pick a winner without looking like a loser. I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, I can't pick a winner between Gamble and Stewart. Specifically because this fight is so, so closely matched that, I mean, it could go either way very, very easily. I think it's going to be an incredibly exciting fight to watch. It's one I'm going to be keeping my eyes on very close. One, because I'm a fan of Chase Gamble and Alan Stewart. Uh, But two, I want to see how the numbers play out in this one. I'm a very big statistic guy, if you hadn't noticed. I'm a very big fan of seeing how the numbers play out. And this particular fight... The numbers are telling me a story, and I just want to see if that plays out true to life. Get your tickets right now at nextlevelfightclub.com. September 16th at the Kerr Scott Building in uh, the North Carolina State Fairgrounds. Get your tickets. Be in attendance. Good seat still available. This is one of many, many fights that are going to be on the card that is just going to tickle your fancy. I, I, I promise. I mean, I've been to how many Next Level Fight Clubs now, and I've yet to be disappointed by any of it. It's fantastic combat sports. Mixed martial arts has made itself a name. In the Carolinas, thanks to promotions like uh, Next Level Fight Club. Coming up, let's talk about Hannah Shockwave Cyphers versus Nicole Smith. Cyphers is a Next Level Fight Club veteran, having last competed at Next Level Fight Club 7. Nicole Smith herself, a Bellator and Shamrock FC veteran. Shamrock FC is a Bellator feeder promotion. When Bellator is looking for guys to fight and they need someone quickly, Shamrock FC is one of those ones that they go to. At least I know it was in the last couple of years. I can't say for certain if it's been anything real recent. But I know they've done some work with Shamrock FC, and that might have actually even been during the Bjorn Rebney era. It might have been. Scott Coker's been doing fantastic things with Bellator. I mean, over the last year, I've been extremely, extremely uh, vocal about Bellator, but I think uh, Scott Coker has come in, and he's done some great things. I mean, signing guys like Alan Crowder, uh, Nicole Smith, Dominic Mazzotta, Mike Wilkins, they've just done some really great things. Hannah Cyphers has a refined killer instinct. What does that mean? In her last bout with Jillian Roberts, there may have been an arm injury, and I've not been able to say for certain, but Jillian Roberts had a very, very tight arm bar on. It might have been, you know, it might have hurt Hannah Cypher's elbow a little bit, but she kept pushing the fight and scoring points up to the fight was stopped. A refined killer instinct, you know, she was hurt. She kept pushing. She kept trying to score points. You can't teach that. Mike Tyson himself said everyone has a plan until you get hit in the face. Hannah Cypher's was hit in the face and she kept coming. That's what makes her dangerous. That's what makes her an incredible competitor. And that, honestly, that's what makes her fights fun to watch. Shockwave, very well-rounded. She has scored wins in each scenario possible. Decision, knockout, submission. They're all there. Her gas tank is strong. I feel like someone could make it to the third and not look fresh. And I think that is pretty hazardous to the fight winning. I mean, when the judges come down to it, if you think about what judging criteria is, a judging is each round is an in, is a mini fight. So Cyphers and Smith, you know, Cyphers beats her up in the first round. Okay, does that have any impact on the second round? It shouldn't. So Smith beats up Cyphers in the second round. We go into the third. First and second rounds don't matter. If one of those two ladies aren't looking fresh in the fight, I mean, it shouldn't have an impact, but it might impact their uh, their performance in that third round. This is Hannah's second foray in the Next Level Fight Club cage, and she'll be looking to avenge that loss to Jillian Roberts. And that fight, no one had anything to be ashamed of. Hannah Cyphers really went in there and took it to Jillian Roberts, and Jillian Roberts took it to Hannah Cyphers. And those are one of those fights you make you sit up and take notice, that there is no shame in in not winning that fight. You know, you went out there, you proved yourself, you had a lot of people take notice about you. That is exactly what happened. And there's a lot to be learned from not winning a fight. You learn about holes in your game, and that's what makes you come back stronger. With uh, running the risk of nerding myself unconscious, 
if anyone has ever watched the the Dragon Ball Z cartoon it show, uh, Vegeta said himself, you know, you get beat to within an inch of your life, you come back 10% stronger. I think there might be a small amount of truth to that, that after you suffer not winning a fight, that you come back knowing more about yourself. You know more about your, your game. You know more about how you win. Nicole Smith is an adept warrior herself, winning each possible victory, the decision, submission, knockout. Uh, when Smith is hunting for submissions, her rear naked choke, extremely effective. Extremely effective. I mean, if she might have to throw it on once or twice, but once she's got it, in her experience, once she's got it, she's got it. Nicole Smith's last fight would have been one year ago to the day, to the exact day. Last time Nicole Smith fought was uh, September 16th, 2016. She's coming out of a 365-day hiatus for Next Level Fight Club against an incredibly dangerous opponent in Hannah Cyphers. Let's talk about the keys to victory. Uh, We'll start with Hannah Cyphers. Cyphers has been the distance more times than Smith has and has been victorious more times in the distance more often. She needs to be willing to push the fight into the later rounds. So whenever these ladies have gone to the third, Hannah Cyphers has statistically been more victorious in in the third and final round. That might be a good idea to try to push Nicole Smith there, maybe to score those points. Hannah Cyphers needs to be ready to engage Nicole Smith on the feet and on the ground. Score points where, where available and remain confident. With two fighters who are able to stop or win a fight in every way possible, that creates a variable. And whenever you have that what if, that X factor, confidence can sometimes become the great equalizer. If uh, Hannah Cyphers goes in there ready to take Nicole Smith's head off or ready to take an arm home with her as a trophy, confidence that she's able to perform is going to be paramount. And I've seen Hannah Cyphers fight. I know that she has the ability. She needs to remain very confident in that ability. The third and final vic- key to victory for Hannah Cyphers is energy conservation and pacing. If the fight gets to the third round, Hannah's going to be in a good position to score and look fresh. She needs to look like she's ready to go another couple rounds by the time that bell rings so that the judges know Hannah Cyphers got the best of that round. Um, that's just psychology. you know. It's the same reason why after the fight's over, both guys will throw their hands in the air after they won. And, I mean, it might be an obvious thing where, like, ah, that guy didn't do nothing. He didn't win. Why has he got his arms up? It's a psychology. You know, if the guy believes he won, I mean, is he going to sway the judge's opinion by throwing his hands up? Maybe. Doesn't hurt. The keys to victory for Nicole Smith, knowing her strengths and how to capitalize on them. Most of her wins have been by submission. She needs to be ready to jump on opportunities as they present themselves. It's simple. Hannah Cypher gives up her neck. Take it. You know, that rear naked choke is incredibly effective. Take it. If a, if a heel hook or a knee bar or a body triangle presents itself, you attack on it. She needs to listen to her corner. Uh, if she's employing the strategy of looking for scoring opportunities, her corner is going to be an extra set of eyes to be scouting those chances. How many times? Do, let, let me rewind this. She needs to make sure that her corner is looking out for those sort of things. I was at a fight once and I heard a corner giving giving the worst advice ever. Now, make him pay. Hey, make him pay. Make him pay. Well, what the what in the actual F does that mean? Nicole Smith and her corner need to be looking for opportunities. They kind of need to have a more broader view from the corner. Uh, so if Hannah Cyphers is doing something that Nicole Smith is able to sweep and capitalize on it, she needs to be listening to that. And uh, lastly, Nicole Smith needs to be cognizant of her endurance. She needs to be ready to go blow for blow with Hannah Cyphers. And have enough gas to get to the third. We talked about that ring psychology again. That cage psychology. Throwing your hands up at the end of the round. Who looked fresher? Who scored more damage in the round? The third round I think is going to be is going to be the deciding factor. If the fight doesn't stop early. I really think that that third round. That third and final round is going to be the linchpin. I mean it could go one and one with the third deciding. Could be two and three. And then the judges just might be drinking that, that night. I don't know. I've seen it happen. Regardless though. This is another bout. When I sit down to pick... Which fights I'm going to talk about for a preview episode. I sit down and I look at records. And I mean, I do this for hours before I even turn the mic on. I'll sit down and look at records. I'll look at trends. I'll look at people they fought before. And these are the fights that kind of stick out. And I'm seeing a trend even as I'm talking here. The trend is I'm picking the fights with the X factor. With the ones that I can't say for certain who's going to win over who. It's fun to talk about. It's fun to postulate. Fun to guess. Fun to create theories. And even more fun than that is actually being attendance at the fight 
seeing it happen personally. And if you've never been to an next level fight club fight, it's something to see. Like it's almost like a rock show kind of atmosphere. They have a great DJ. They're, you know, they're interacting with the crowd, the VIT P tables. I mean, you feel like a VIP sitting at them and, you know, next level fight club has always been extremely receptive to Cajun nation TV. I think we have a great working relationship with them. I thoroughly enjoyed being at all their fights and I'm looking forward to always going to them again. Uh, so get your tickets right now at nextlevelfightclub.com. The fight going down September 16th at the Kerr Scott Building in the North Carolina Fairgrounds. Doors open at 6. Fight starts at 7. That's bell time. If you take, if you buy your tickets online and they can't get them to you, they will be at Will Call. They're or, a ticket ordering system. Incredibly efficient. Incredibly easy. Get your tickets right now at nextlevelfightclub.com. The last fight we're going to talk about here on the Prize Fight Podcast is going to be Alan Bose versus Eric Ellerby. This fight is most likely going to be contested at light heavyweight. I have not seen the official announcement, but everything is telling me, hey, big guy, this fight's going to be contested at 205. Alan Bowes is going to be making his pro debut tonight, and as an amateur, the man's record is flawless. Now, normally amateur careers don't mean much in the grand scheme of how fights are contested. What it does say is that that's the only information I have to go on, but he was flawless. I mean, never tasted defeat. And this could be the first time we don't know. Uh, as an amateur, Bose is a Bellator veteran. Submission victories of over some of the bet region's best, including a title victory over Terrence Lewins. Oh, God, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Terrence Lewins is an absolute stud. And, and Alan Bose is able to stop him for a title. And that is huge. Statistically, Bose will stop a fight before it goes to the decision. He's also after the scoring decision wins. Uh, so what that... <laughs> garbled mess of, of words means is with I think he has like five, six maybe amateur fights. I think four have been stopped, two went to decision. So he's able to stop a fight, but he's also able to go the distance and still win. Uh, Eric Ellerby, a veteran of five pro fights, including a bout with coach Chase Gamble and a TKO victory over Dusty Shaw. Ellerby consistently goes into each fight looking to finish, looking to fight, looking to brawl, looking to entertain. And that's something that needs to be said about Eric Ellerby. He always fights like it's his last fight. He always fights like he has something to prove. And that's what's entertaining, especially for us as fight fans. Uh, we're going to wrap up with the keys to victory for Alan Bose. He needs to remain calm. A pro debut is a big deal. And he needs to control his nerves and his focus. That's going to be paramount in victory. I'm getting super excited. Oh my God, it's a pro fight. It's a pro fight. And when you think about it, he's been here before. And he just needs to remain confident. Hey, you know what? I've been here before. I can pull out victory. The rules are going to be different. A lot more opportunities for strikes and submissions are going to be present. He needs to be ready to capitalize on them. I can't remember if North Carolina will allow for heel hooks in a pro fight or not. But I mean, strikes to the head and on the ground are now open. You know, there's going to be a lot more opportunity there. He needs to capitalize on it. He needs to familiarize himself with the rules going into this pro fight. He also needs to trust his corner. Without the time to acclimate himself to pro rules and the opportunities that are now available, he needs to rely on his corner to identify those opportunities for him and so he can take advantage of it. The key is to victory for uh, for Ellerby, knowing that he's the veteran coming into this fight. He's been here before. He doesn't have to worry about the nerves and anxiety working him up like, like Alan Bowes might have to. Fundamental striking. A slugfest with Alan Bose is going to be an incredibly bad idea. What we have here is we have a pro, a debuting pro with everything to prove. Getting in there to engage in a slugfest might not be the hottest idea. Head and foot movement are going to be crucial. You better believe that Alan Bose is training like Rocky Balboa right now for this fight. And Eric Ellerby, who is the veteran, knows he doesn't have to worry about those nerves. Uh, just, it's just a bad idea to go in there and start swinging for the fences. I mean, yeah, he might get lucky and catch Alan Bose with a lucky strike, you know. But fundamentals, because you know that Alan Bose is going to be training for those fundamentals along. So, I mean, to get victory, to get winning momentum, he's going to want to be employing good head and foot movement, fundamental striking. Uh, the last key to victory is he needs to be ready to go all three rounds. He needs to try for the finish, but be ready to go the distance to increase his odds of victory. Alan Bose has only fought... Less than five minute rounds. So he does not know what that fifth minute in a pro fight looks like. He might be very adept at it. He might see that fifth minute and swim. 
it might be like that second win every fifth minute. But statistically, Eric Ellerby has been there for places that Eric Bowes, I mean, Alan Bowes hasn't. So that third round could be a very, very crucial big deal for everyone involved. Closing out the Prize Fight Podcast, Chris Hurd is going to be making his pro debut this weekend. I've been a very big fan of Chris Hurd. I think he's got great things going for him. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm, but I think there might be a heavyweight fight either in the main or co-main. And the heavyweights for North Carolina, that's a big if. I talked last week about, you know, how does North Carolina re- recover from a raid by the UFC if they're coming to take all of our heavyweights? Well, right now is the time that regionally and locally we're developing new talent ready for the next generation. Uh, and it's at these fight cards where you're going to see these guys first. I tell you guys to... Oh, look, okay. Let, let me get into a good frame of mind here. I tell you guys to go to local fights. Not for me. I gain nothing by expending the oxygen saying go to local fights. I do it because I love the sport of mixed martial arts. I do it because I love creating more fans of mixed martial arts. I love talking to those guys who are like, hey, I saw these guys fought way back in the day, and I want to encourage that as much as possible. And the best way for me to encourage that is to say, go to fights like Next Level Fight Club because you're going to see the fighters of tomorrow. Not even a year ago, you could see current UFC heavyweight Alan Crowder fight in Raleigh, North Carolina for Next Level Fight Club. Getting your tickets, <laughs> clunking down the cash is your best way of seeing the next generation of champions, the next generation of contenders, friends. I tell you no lies. Tickets available right now at nextlevelfightclub.com. Doors open at 6, bell time at 7. Tickets can be picked up at will call, I believe, if they cannot get them to you in time. But you will not regret it. Supporting local mixed martial arts while you can is always a great idea. Coming up next week on the Prize Fight Podcast, well, I have no idea. Right now we're focusing on September 16th. The Next Level Fight Club, number eight. We want to send out a big thank you to everyone at Next Level Fight Club, all the fighters who allow us to engage, everyone who just allows us to exist in the universe. It is greatly appreciated, my friends. Until next time, fights, Cameron, action. Thank you for tuning in to the Cage Nation Prize Fight Podcast. All rights reserved 2016 to 2017 Planet Airy Sports. The Prize Fight Podcast is part of the Cage Nation Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.cagenationtv.com.